Hello everybody and welcome back to Animal Crossing New Leaf. Welcome Amiibo! Today we have a letter from Fuchsia. No idea why, but all of a sudden I feel like writing you. I think the most I think you're the most dependable person I know, and that means a lot coming from me. You rock. Thanks, Fuchsia. Also, I know it's Saturday and I'm starting kinda early in the day. That's partially because I actually have something I kinda wanna ramble about today, and I'm kinda tired, so. There's no guarantee I will be awake for- well, okay, KK concerts are things I'll always be awake for, but, you know, to do daily stuff, there's no guarantee I'll be awake for that. So, I wanted to at least get in to do the daily stuff early, before, uh, I basically end up having to miss out on today's, like, bell generation. Crazy red gallery up. Well, it's not the statue. Yes, red. Yes, red. I know. Um, think that's always genuine. I'm I'm learning. Yeah, it's always genuine. I'm pretty sure I already already have it. Uh, Mona Lisa's hands are the wrong way. And this one. Um. She's not wearing a hat. Okay, so literally the only one that is genuine here is the one that's always genuine, and I'm pretty sure we already have that one. So. You might be wondering, what, well, what, what, is, what, is, what does Steph want to ramble about today? I've been watching a lot of videos, mostly because I've been just showing up and recommended because I've been back watching Yu-Gi-Oh! content of basically, like, you know, uh, various things to do with Yu-Gi-Oh! And one of them is basically how complex the game is and how hard it is to get into. No Pudge. I was get sleepy after lunch, so I drink coffee to wake up. Ooh. Ugh. Coffee and my sleepiness are duking it out, pizza bun. Man, I really wish coffee still woke me up. But, like, the, the thing I saw was, like, man, Yu-Gi-Oh is so complex. Like, you can't just hand a new player a deck and expect them to learn it kind of thing. Of, I feel like that heavily depends on the deck. But also, you really can't do that with any card game. At least not and have that player gain information that's actually going to be valuable to them. I say this as someone who has tried to get into Magic the Gathering many times. And every time I come away from it, not really being all that good at evaluating cards, not being able to even really evaluate the colors terribly well, and just kind of being annoyed. Like... An example I can give is, f like, what I have for basically learning magic with is just what was a big box of bulk. It was like $10 for almost certainly more than $10 worth of bulk. They have a fine two lamp. Well, in this bulk... Of all of the colors, green just feels oppressively strong. From doing some math earlier, looking at the top standard format decks, green isn't even represented in 60 or more percent of the meta standard format decks. By that same token, white almost feels pathetically weak. It, it doesn't really do much of anything other than stall and gain life. 
what's represented in at least 33% of standard decks? White cards. So if I were to build a standard deck with the information I have off of the cards I've played, I'd try to build probably mostly a mono green deck because it green does everything. Why would I want anything else? But based on the meta, I'd probably lose a lot. And like the argument people give is like, oh well, at least playing magic, you you like, you you'll still get the feeling of how magic plays. It's like, well, not really, because how magic plays depends on the format you're playing. So where did Gabby go? I was gonna talk to her, and now she's gone and vanished on me. But like, you could play standard format Magic the Gathering and a jank deck and probably get a similar feeling, maybe. Oh, there she is. If you were to take your jank deck to Legacy, you're gonna get wrecked. Oh, this rain is just awful, don't you think, hun? What's up? It's the latest. It's the word in Sapphire, hun. Come on, I'm dying to hear the latest gaffet gossip. Hmm, you're not talking. Oh, you must be keeping a sworn secret. Spill the beans! Now I don't know what's up with Sapphire anymore. So, you know. Couldn't tell you even if I, you know, wanted to. But, um... Like, a legacy deck is going to be basically playing almost like a Yu-Gi-Oh! combo deck. They're playing a lot of really cheap to free cards that generate advantage, generate card advantage, with the whole goal of out-advantaging and comboing their opponent into a point where their opponent can't play the game. That's Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, Peppa Pig, it's been raining for a while now. Everything's getting muddier and muddier, Peppa Pig. So something up? Let's, let, let's talk. Hey, Chick Pia, something you can help me on my latest obsession, butterflies. I could try. It's kind of raining. So there's none around at the moment, but, you know. I can see what I can do. But, like, at the same time, like, a thing I had saw was someone saying, like, oh, they had a friend who played Yu-Gi-Oh! for, like, 15 years, and their their friend still makes mistakes, but they they sat their friend down to play Magic the Gathering and gave them a, a, a deck to play with and spent two hours teaching them how to play the deck, and they, and, and they don't make a mistake. I'm sorry, if your friend has been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! for that long, and is still making mistakes, like, a regular occurrence, like, that, like, say, ruling mistakes on, like, the cards they're, they're playing? They probably haven't actually been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! that long. Like, I could make the argument that I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! for... Got my first deck in like 2001, 2002? So like, 22 to 23 years? I've not been actively playing Yu-Gi-Oh that whole time. Like... I have played a fair bit, but I come and go from it. Say, couldn't have been notice your Amethyst. Thing is, it's one of my top... That was one of the top prizes of last month's issues of Learning Languages Pro. Really wanted one, but somehow I ended up with a, my mint condition scoreboard instead. I mean, my amethyst is worth more, but sure, it's your color. Like... <clears throat> Excuse me there. But like, at the same time... If I were to take someone who's never played Yu-Gi-Oh! before, sit them down with a deck like Melodious, which is currently a meta deck, and explain to them how to get to their end board, 
I could probably do that in less than two hours, and they would understand how to play Melodious in that time. And at that point, now all they have to do is learn Melodious' matchup to the other meta decks. And they're basically there. Like, Melodious isn't a complicated deck, and it's actually a meta deck. Oh, what a relief, thought it had the mange or something, it was just a flea. Thanks, hon. This time you have a flea, I'll totally help you out. I don't get fleas, though, so... You can't be wasting your time there, my man. Okay, Velma wants her time capsule. Is Velma even awake? Okay, she's out for a walk. Um, I'm gonna wait to actually, like, see her somewhere. Because I don't want to dig it up and just have it in my inventory for, you know, until I finally run into her. Pretty good chance I'll run into her, like, later tonight as well. So. But, like... Every card game is complicated, and unless you have someone who's willing to sit down with you and help you learn it, it's gonna be hard. Hi, Schmoopy, what a coincidence meeting you here, Airmail. What can I do for you? A list. Just running all my errands. Okay, maybe I'm doing a little window shop. Alright, let's fire. Like, th that same thing goes for every game, though. They're all complicated. You need to spend time to learn how to play whatever game it is you want to learn how to play. Even Animal Crossing, there's things to learn that makes it a lot more fun and interesting. You know? Like, if you just sit around doing nothing, then yeah, Animal Crossing is going to be really boring. You're going to hate it. But if you go around talking with your animals, collecting your fossils every day, like it's a little scavenger hunt every day, you know, working on your collections, like there's plenty of things to do and like there's optimal ways to work on the collection. Like there's things to learn about Animal Crossing. It doesn't have much of a learning curve, but it does have one. Rofina! Ah, these crowds. You know, I do love shopping, Stephen, but the lines and the competition get to me. It's like, hey, we all get what we want if we just if we just cooperate and relax. Know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. And, like, one thing I've always heard as an argument against Yu-Gi-Oh! That I don't agree with. Mostly because it tends to come from Magic the Gathering players, of all people. Is that hand traps are confusing. How? Y'all come from a format where as long as it's your turn, you can play basically anything from your hand. And if it's your opponent's turn, if it says instant or flash, you can play it from your hand. Y'all have hand traps. You're just not conceptualizing them the same way a Yu-Gi-Oh! player would. Like, you're seeing them as a counter spell. We see that as a hand trap. You keep it in your hand, your opponent doesn't know you have it. It's a card that can negate effects or do something to interrupt your opponent in some way. Like... I could grab a structure deck I have sitting right here and pull a hand trap out of it. Like, we have them in structure decks. The one in this structure deck is actually Ash Blossom. One of the strongest hand traps to ever be printed. Because it basically says, if your opponent would take a card from deck and put it anywhere other than in the deck, negate it. You know. And given cards are the resource system of Yu-Gi-Oh! 
you know. And like, I'm not saying Yu-Gi-Oh isn't too complex. It kind of is. There are plenty of stupidly complex decks. There's a lot of decks that just, they will, their turn will take 20 to 30 minutes for them to end on a board that if you couldn't stop them, you've probably just lost. Like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that isn't the case. But that's kind of always been the case with Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's kind of the case with a lot of games. I mean, like, using an example of, like, even my jank, effectively playground format Magic the Gathering experience I have. Well... The green deck is going to ramp faster because Land of War Elves and things similar to Land of War Elves, Birds of Paradise, stuff like that. Giving basically, you know, free mana, pushing you ahead in the mana curve, which means you're going to be probably playing more uh, other creatures sooner. You're going to be playing bigger creatures sooner. And that you're just going to overwhelm your opponent with creatures. Oh, there she is. Hey, Velma. A small favor to ask, huh? Remember that time capsule you buried for me? Gonna need you to dig that up. Can't wait another 20 years for the things I buried. Okay, don't go anywhere. Pick up the time capsule. And I mean, like, that, that's just kind of the thing of, like, there are, there were times where the turn I was doing in my little playground format, Magic the Gathering, was five, ten minutes long playing the green deck. <laughs> capsule time! Can't wait to look inside, Billa. This is my old women's recruit suit. Wait, there's a letter inside too. Completely forgot to put that in there. Future me. Why did I want this buried? Seriously, clashing with everything in my wardrobe. When it comes back, I bet my look will be different and there will be harmony. So that's what this is all about. I can be so ridiculous once in a while. I swear, since you helped me with all this, you can never what was buried. I mean, I really don't want it, but okay. I really hope you enjoy it. It's a woman's recruit suit. Yep, you already said that. Like, an even stronger variant of the green deck, basically, as I just kind of came to call it, was a green-blue deck that basically was just green, but with enough islands and... Uh, blue draw cards to not only ramp quickly with the uh, the 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 green cards, but have more cards in hand with the blues. Like because there really weren't all that many green draw, but there was a lot of blue draw. So blue green. And, like, I've seen people playing Magic the Gathering. And, like, their turns still take a really long time at the competitive level. Sure, the first couple turns might not. Even then, it's a might not, because that heavily depends on the format. I've seen, like, legacy decks that, you know... Their turn one hand, they've already generated, like, eight or nine mana, and they're just continuing to go. And their opponent hasn't even had a chance to play a card yet. Like. 
It's stuff like that, of like, it really heavily depends on the format. Which is where I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! would be an easier game to get into if we had more officially sanctioned formats. Because, like, what's called Edison format is basically the format in the early 5Ds era. So it's after GX, but before things got really crazy. As in, almost all of the top decks in Edison play a large number of traps because you can. You really can't play traps in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. You just can't. Not unless those traps read, you can play this card from your hand. Because trap cards are just too slow these days. You need a card that you can play and will have impact the moment you play it. Or else you're kind of wasting your time playing it. Because your opponent will be playing cards that will have impact the moment they play them. And you need to be able to respond to that. That was my thumb twitching. Love it when that happens. So like, Infinite Impermanence sees play as a hand trap, not a proper trap. Though it can see play as a proper trap, because if you open it turn one, and then, you know, you don't need it, you can set it, and it's just as useful to you. It's arguably more useful. As long as you don't put it in the same column as something you need to desperately activate the effect of and then activate it, and that can, that can really screw you over. Infinite Impermanence, if played on the field, negates the effects of all other cards in the same column. Yeah. <laughs> the Imperm column is uh, quite a meme at this point, if I'm honest. Um, But, like, quite honestly, you could probably pick up, even if you've never played Yu-Gi-Oh! before, you could probably grab a rule book, pick up an Edison deck, and learn how to play the game pretty well. And you will learn things that will translate to modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Like... If you just pick up the Edison card pool, even, or just, you know, some old packs or something, like a... Pick up an old starter deck and just a bunch of packs. And then go from there. You'll learn from playing how to evaluate cards. And to a degree, I have learned to evaluate cards from my buying bulk Magic the Gathering. But also, at the same time, I kind of haven't. There has been cards I've looked at and went, Man, this is garbage. That I've then seen other people go, No, hold on, that's actually a good card. To generally my response of, But how? And the response to that will be, Oh, well, it's a blank blank. And it's like, Huh? Like, a uh, human cleric is a... a just a thing that apparently was just... If it was if something was a human cleric... It's got a pretty big a bonus to it, basically. Like, some support that made it really worth playing. And it's like, okay. I've never heard of any of this support in my life, so I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, but... I, I, I guess I'll have to take your word for it. You know, that sort of thing, where it's like... It just doesn't really make sense why this card is good, it's just apparently good. I, you know...
Meanwhile, I could probably look at most Yu-Gi-Oh cards and tell you whether they'll be good or not, at least as a standalone card. I may not know the full context of whatever archetype it is, but I could probably tell you if an individual card is good or not. I can also tell you something that a lot of players don't want to hear. Uh, Max C is completely busted and should never come back, ever, and should be banned in Master Duel and the OCG. I was also one of those players who was pointing out before Verte Anaconda got banned that it was an unhealthy card for the game and that it kind of needed to be banned. To which I was generally being told, Nah, you're crazy. It's perfectly fine. Verte Anaconda has been banned. Because it's an unhealthy card for the game. Verte Anaconda read, If deck has fusion spell that uses materials from deck, play Verte. Like... Hello, Gabby. Hey there, hun. You say you wanted a tan dog tooth shirt? I didn't. Um, sure. I'll I'll take it. Sell it, I guess. She really has only used it once. Oh, I'll be sure to tell Reese. Just cleaning up flower paths at this point. Um. But, like, I'm honestly still just confused to why it took so long for other Yu-Gi-Oh players and even Konami to be like, yeah, Verte is kind of unhealthy for the game. Because to explain Verte Anaconda's effect the best way I can, it basically read, you know, it, it required any two monsters. So it's basically you take two monsters, throw them in, the gra throw them in your graveyard, summon Verte. Send one fusion spell from your deck to the graveyard, Verte's effect becomes that effect. So, if you had, say, a fusion spell that read, send the materials from deck to graveyard, suddenly Verte's effect becomes special summon a fusion monster from the, you know, using materials from the deck. Which is what made Red Eyes Dark Dragoon seem good. Because this was another thing that people weren't understanding. Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, which is basically a negate card, it was a counter spell on a body. I don't know what that's called in magic, but it was a counter on a body. The only reason it was good was because Verte could use Red Eyes Fusion. Because there's an important distinction between the effects. Verte Anaconda's effect says that the turn you use it, for the rest of the turn, you cannot special summon monsters. Meaning you can just do Verte's effect last. Red Eyes Fusion says you cannot special summon other. You cannot special summon other monsters the turn you activate Red Eyes Fusion. Period. Be it before or after. If you activate Red Eyes Fusion, you cannot summon any more monsters. If you summon a monster, you can no longer activate Red Eyes Fusion. Red Eyes Dark Dragoon was fine. Because the only reliable way of summoning it was Red Eyes Fusion. Which locks you out of playing the game if you summoned Dark Dragoon. Which made it very fair and very much fine. And then Verte Anaconda happened. And made it very unfair. 
I have rambled for half an hour on this. Jeez, and I am getting exceptionally tired. I apologize I'm blinking so much and y'all can actually see me doing... <laughs> ah, it's so embarrassing. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna head into my house and uh, meet you guys back here later today for the KK concert. And I'm back! So yeah, the earlier was quite a ramble, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> uh, we still need to find a butterfly for whoever it was that wanted a butterfly. Honestly, don't remember. I don't think it was Bella. Hey, Punk, what a lovely night. What do you want to talk about? Want to chat? Have you ever spotted a rare bug that you couldn't get in your net? Uh, uh couldn't get in your net in time? Ugh, that's the worst. Found a super easy trick to grabbing a tool. Just pre- Yeah, I know. I- I know. Yeah, I, I know. I don't need tutorial. Was it Pudge? It's already nine, huh? Where's the time go? Need something? I want to chat. I'm debating what the best way to enjoy this kind of weather we're having today. If you don't hurry and decide soon, the entire day is going to be over. Who was it that wanted a bug? Specifically a butterfly. Was it like Rooney? I don't remember. But yeah, I might at some point see about doing some Yu-Gi-Oh content. Um, mostly because like, I just enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh, as you could probably guess. Um... I would probably be doing, like, Legacy of the Duelist, because I just prefer that game. I've probably 100%ed it, like, four times, working on the fifth. Like, it's a really fun game. I'm just trying to think of ways I could do it and keep it interesting for myself. Because a lot of it is like playing through like the 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 story of you know actual Yu-Gi-Oh like the shows, so it's like got an oak silk moth, smooth now. Yeah, I may as well catch this mosquito if I can. There we go. Ah, uh, so like. It's a lot of the story that, like, anyone that's watched the show will already know. So, like, even for viewers, if I'm not doing something kind of interesting, then it would be kind of boring. But I also kind of hate playing with the protagonist decks. So, like, the thought I've had is, like, well, what if I were to basically play with a lot of jank? I think that could be kind of neat. Also, I have some messages on Discord I should check out. Um, so I think I'm going to meet you guys in the museum to donate this bug. And then we'll head to our KK concert because I need to check my Discord. So, PRB. And here we are in the museum. Let's make our donation. I'm sure Blathers is going to love it. Hey, Blathers, got you a nice bug. Peek a bug. Ah, I beg your pardon. I just don't like handling these things much. Sure you do. You just don't like them when they're, you know, the only thing you're handling. If it's two bugs, you like them just fine. But yeah, like, I kind of want to try to do, like, in a way, kind of a masochist playthrough with Legacy of the Duelist. So, to, to explain, so y'all can give me your opinions on whether you think this would be interesting to watch. Basically, you start with... You know, a certain number of packs, basically. And that is what you're allowed to build your deck out of. It, it's typically done in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Where you basically start with, I think it's... 10 packs? Something like that? 10 master packs? And then you, like, build a deck out of those cards. And then... You basically, every time you win, you get to open a pack kind of thing. 
Only, I would take it a little bit of a step further with Legacy of the Duelist, because, like, the early duels would be pretty easy to win. Um... I want to, like, limit myself to Grandpa Moto pack for bait. Well, not not entirely Grandpa Moto. For, for my winning generic duels would be Grandpa Moto's pack exclusively because it's full of junk. I'd want to start with Grandpa Moto because his pack is full of junk and, like, build my deck out of that kind of thing. And then from there, like, um basically have it be that through through the story mode stuff i only get grandpa moto or maybe you know and whatever cards i win from the duels because like winning a duel in legacy of the duels gives you cards so you know that right there would be my thing and then for winning challenge duels i could then open a time period accurate um one of the boosters so like if i'm doing dual monsters era um challenge duels then i can open the one of the dual monsters era packs including grandpa moto you know i i feel like that might be a little too convoluted but i feel like that could actually be kind of fun at the same time i might actually try just doing that on my own to see how fun and viable that is so i like Yu-Gi-Oh, man it's really fun. Ooh, Brofina's in here for the, the concert. Hello, Brofina. Ah, these crowds. You know, I love shopping, but the lines competition get to me. All the shops are closed. You don't need to worry. Hey, Steven. Funny running into you here. Pizza bun. What can I do for you? Let's talk. Do you think KK Slider ever gets nervous? Yeesh. Just thinking about getting up on stage makes me all f all flop sweaty. What? <laughs> okay. Steven, I knew this cat wouldn't miss a show. Looking for a jam tonight? Oh yeah. Cool. Taking requests, you got an itch for an old favorite? Belt the name of the song or just tell me how you're feeling. I'll let you pick, my man. Surprises? No problem. Get just a tune. Dig it. I'm ready like Freddy, so sit and be steady. I'm gonna sit next to Brofina. Because we haven't seen her for a while. If tune, let's groove. KK Cruisin'. Never heard this one. Thank you. 
That was pretty nice. Good man, cool. Check out your pockets. Slip you a boot of the song. Thanks, KK. But yeah, like... I, I honestly, like, really enjoyed the idea of doing kind of a masochist-style thing. Even if it is just me creating a new Master Duel account and doing it that way. Because that'd also be kind of neat. Because, like, I just like the idea of it. The only problem with doing it on Master Duel is, like... I'd potentially have to put money into it and, like... If I want- if I'm gonna put money into, you know, a Master Duel account, I'd kind of want it to be the one that I actively play on, <laughs> you know? So, it, it- it's- it's complicated. Um... I want to sell... I'm gonna sell the shirt. Stag, the moth, the mosquitoes, because they're not butterflies. There is a butterfly that's still around at this time of day, but I'm not seeing it anywhere, so... I don't even remember who wanted the butterfly, so, you know. Moth. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that moth. It, it can live its life. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it's a pretty neat idea. It'll definitely have to wait till after the Pokemon series. Um, because not gonna lie, just doing that Pokemon series appears to already be kind of hurting the Animal Crossing videos. So, like, I want to see if they recover throughout me doing the Pokemon series. And if they don't, I might go to just doing one series at a time. Because, like, yeah, viewership. Ooh, that is quite a KK. Okay, I have heard this song in a villager's house, but like... Or was it a camper's house? I don't remember. Pretty sure. I do like it. Just hadn't heard it live. But, uh... Yeah. I have no idea what's going on on the TV. Uh, <laughs> like, I kind of want to do the Raukau approach of just uploading literally three different video series. <laughs> it's like, man, I love making videos. I love doing this stuff, but YouTube really hates it when you do that. Like... So it's like, hmm. Especially, like, now that I've gotten back to doing, like, two series. Like, I still need to record a bit more Pokemon. I, I need to do that either, like, later tonight or tomorrow. Because, like, I'm closing in on, uh... Not having any more scheduled to go out. But, like, it's so nice and refreshing to be doing multiple series. Which I know probably sounds weird, because, like, you'll hear from YouTubers all the time of, like, man, this is a lot of work. And it kind of is. Like, all the research and work I'm putting into the Pokemon series, like, and I'm still getting things wrong. Bulbasaur could totally get poisoned, guys. Ah, uh, I'm so used to starting Squirtle. That's, that's where that came from. Um, but, like, I love the work. And, like, I love making stuff. So, like, you know. But, yeah. That's gonna be it for today. Thank you all very much for watching. If there's anything of my rant earlier I didn't clarify well enough that you guys want me to, just, like, ask in the comments about it. If you can provide a timestamp as well, that also helps. Um, speaking of the Pokemon series, if you want to see more content I make uh, that's, you know, similar style, but, you know, also a Nintendo game. Pokemon Leaf Greens, currently ongoing. Uploads exactly 12 hours after these videos go live, or you can see it ex exactly 12 hours before these videos go live. Either way, um, basically, it's a video to wake up to and a video to go to sleep to. Um, so, you know, it's pretty nice. I've got that covered. Now I just need one for, uh, to, one to eat lunch to. Uh, <laughs> and I'll be set. <laughs> but, yeah. Thank you all very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you back here tomorrow for more Animal Crossing New Leaf. Welcome, Amiibo!
See you all then.